You know, so crazy. I was listening to a sermon this morning and the, the pastor was talking about people asking, hey, should we should we pray for these people who don't know God? Like specifically back like uh, like in the Old Testament and stuff like that. Should 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 people be praying for like these pagan emperors and these in these pagan kings, like these people who are so far away from God? Should we as Christians be praying for them? And the pastor was like, yeah. Obviously, because that's what God wants us to do. That is, that is God's will. It is God's will that everyone is saved. So I was thinking about that, and then this story came up. And I was like, you know what? These celebrities need a lot of prayer. They need a lot of prayer because they are so lost. They are so, so lost. And Dwayne Wade is no exception. Dwayne Wade is extremely lost. He's extremely misguided. There's obviously a, a lack of godly counsel in his life. And it's evident by this story. It's evident by this story. Dwayne Wade's ex-wife files a petition objecting to legally change daughter Zaire's name. Zaire. Zaya. I'm sorry. I think that used to be his old name, but now it's Zaya. So for those of you who do not know, <laughs> Dwayne Wade very famous, very successful basketball player, won multiple championships, played with LeBron James, played with uh, Shaquille O'Neal, just very successful in his career, right? Now he married Gabrielle Union, who was also very successful as an actress. They came together and about, a, a, I think a, maybe a few years ago, this story came out that Dwayne Wade's son, he has two sons, his younger son is transitioning to be a girl, and everyone was kind of like tripping. It was a huge story. And it was a, a huge story specifically because of how he handled it. He was very supporting. He was very loving from a media standpoint, from a, a worldly standpoint, which we're going to get into. And he actually went so far as to file a petition with the court of Los Angeles to change his son's name legally to Zaya. And... The mom, Zaya's actual mom, not Gabrielle Union, but Dwayne Wade's ex-wife, she filed a counter position and now she's saying, hey, you are positioned to profit from this child's name and gender change. This child's only 15 years old. And now the child's mother is coming out and saying that Dwayne Wade is positioned to profit from this child's name change and gender change. I have a lot of respect, a lot of respect for what this mom is doing right now, standing up for what is right and standing up for the truth. Because in this world right now, there's very few people that are bold enough to actually speak the truth. And the truth is a child has no right deciding whether or not they should transition their gender <laughs> they're a child like this child is 15 years old this child legally can't even drive a car but you're telling me that they can legally change their gender they can legally make a, a, a life-altering decision that they're going to have to live with for the rest of their life but yet they can't even drive a car yet because that's against the law but you know what's so crazy as parents, we're losing our rights. This parent literally has to go to court in order to say, hey, can we at least just wait until this child is 18? Let's just wait until this child is 18. And then he can make the decision to transition at that time. If that's still what he wants to do, can we just do that? But it's like, no, I'm going to do it right now. We're going to do this right now. And that's what D-Wade's trying to do. D-Wade is trying to push to, for all this to happen right now. And the ex-wife, I think her name is C.O. Vaughn Funches. C.O. Vaughn is saying like, yo, I think you're pushing this to happen because you're going to profit from it. You're going to make money from it. You're going to see a financial gain from it. And you're actually pressuring my son into making this decision before he's ready to actually make it. And it says the former athlete 40 spoke about um, 
his decision to transition his his son to his daughter on the Ellen show, which we're going to watch in a second. But it says, according to the documents obtained by people, Funches Wade, so the ex-wife, Petition was filed on Tuesday in the Superior Court of California, County of L.A., as an objection to the initial petition Wade filed in August to legally change Zaya's name. In Funches Wade's recent filing, the 41-year-old claims that Wade is positioned to profit from the minor's name change and gender change with various companies through contacts and marketing opportunities, including but not limited to deals with Disney. Obviously, Disney wants a a piece of this. (laughs) Uh, This is like this is the the perfect the the perfect cross for Disney. You have this athlete, successful athlete coming out of retirement from the NBA, has a lot of status, a lot of clout. You have his son transitioning to be a woman. Disney already came out. The executives of Disney already came out and they said something crazy like they want one third of all of Disney's future content to have LGBT uh, representation moving forward. This would be the perfect representation for Disney. It's no surprise that Disney wants a piece of this. And, you know, is he trying to profit off of his son's likeness, off of his son's potential gender change? Possibly, but we don't know. I would hope not. This dude has already made millions and millions of dollars. I would hope he would be content with what he already has. But it does seem a little bit strange that all this is happening so fast, that it's picking up so much media attention, that just a few years ago, you know, they were on the Ellen show and they were talking about his decision to transition his daughter. And now we are at this point where they're actually trying to make it happen so quickly. And it does seem like there is some brand influence. It does seem like there is some monetary influence. But let's take a listen to what he had to say. So this is back in 2020. Just so you can have a, a, a full perspective of, of his stance. And then he also responded to this petition by his ex-wife. We're going to talk about that too as well. But let's take a look at this. Here, that was a clip from the ESPN docu- documentary. And um, first of all, I just... I think it's what every, you know, every parent should be is what you're being right now, which is unconditionally loving your child and supporting you. your child in whoever they are. I mean, that's, there are so many parents that are just, oh, you're not going the way I imagined or wanted you to be and freak out and you're so loving and supportive. So, you know, a couple of things. First off, he chose to go on The Ellen Show very strategically. This is not, you know, by chance. Obviously, the his PR team is going to set it up in a way where he can have an interview with somebody who has the same views and the same beliefs so that he doesn't have to be challenged on what he believes. Ellen is a lesbian woman. Of course, Ellen is going to support children transitioning into, you know, different genders because she that's what she supports. She's She's very loud and proud about it. So that's number one, like, you know, go, go at at least have a conversation with somebody who's going to challenge you respectfully, respectfully, so that you can have a varying view and varying opinion on this matter. So that's number one. But then she said something, she said, you know, you're not conforming to the, what other people think you should be doing and that you're just acting out of love. And that's what all parents should be doing. But it's not about us as parents conforming to what another parent says that we should do. It's about us following the word of God. It's about us allowing the Holy Spirit to give us guidance and to give us direction. Because we don't know what we're doing. We've never knew what we were doing. (laughs) You know, we, we had everything so perfect and then we sinned. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know how deep our sin actually is. So instead of uh, uh, leaning on the counsel of the world, lean on the counsel of God. Lean on the counsel of God, because if you did, you would understand that love is not about allowing your child to be whoever or whatever they want to be. Love is about teaching your child that the way that God created them is perfect and that God himself said it was good. So this world has the concept of love completely flipped upside down completely flipped upside down. Of Zaya, and, and what a special child she is. Yes, she is, she is. Thank you so much for that. Um, first of all, me and my wife, my wife Gabrielle, 
um, Union. We are, we are proud, when I say proud, we are proud parents um, of a child in the LGBTQ plus uh, community. And we're proud allies as well. Um, and we, we take our, our roles and our responsibility as parents Bro, it sounds like he's just talking off like a script or something. It sounds like his PR team is like, all right, you're going to open with this. First, we're going to open with this. We're going to say, hey, we're proud. We're proud to have a child who is who is in this community. We are proud of it. And we we take the, we don't take this, this responsibility lightly. It sounds like he's just opening up with a script. It does. <sighs> Very seriously. I don't know. Um, so when our, when our child comes home with a question, when our child comes home with an issue, when our child comes home with anything, it's our job as parents to listen to that, to give them the best information that we can, the best feedback that we can. Um, and that doesn't change because sexuality is now involved in it. So once Zaya, 12-year-old, came home, um, and first Zion, everybody, I don't know if everyone knows, originally named Zion, Zion born Zion. Um, as a boy, wow. came home and said, hey, uh, so I want to talk to you guys. Um, you know, I think going forward, I'm ready to live my truth. So Zion... Originally, the, his son's name was Zion. At 12 years old, Zion comes home and says, hey, I'm ready to live my truth. As a parent, and, and once again, we don't know the conversations that were had behind closed doors. But this is what he's saying on a national you know, televised show. That he came home, he said, yo, I'm ready to live my truth. And y'all just supported it. There's no, hey, you know you're going to be like 6'5", right? Hey, you know what? One day you, you're going to want to have a, a family and, and children, right? You're going to be a six foot five black woman in America. Is there any conversation about that? Because Dwayne weighs six foot three. His other son is like six foot two. Normally, typically, I'm not a doctor, but typically the younger ones are taller than the older siblings. So this dude gonna be like six foot five, walking around the hills, six foot seven, walking around the hills with a whole wig on, trying to have a family. You don't think at any point in time during during when all of that is happening, when this dude's hands can, are, are the size to palm a, a, an NBA size basketball. You don't think when all of this is happening that there's not going to be an ounce of, hmm, did I make the right decision when I was 12? Did my parents actually give me the right counsel when I was 12, when my brain was not yet still developed? But let's just get back into this video. And I want to be uh, referenced as she and her. Uh, I would love for you guys to call me Zaya. And so internally, now is our job to one, go out and get information, to reach out to every relationship that we have. My wife reached out to everybody on the, the uh, cast of Pose. Um, and we're just trying to figure out as much information we can to make sure that we give our child the best opportunity to be you know, her best self. Yeah, I mean, I would think that it's one thing. Bro, they gonna clap for whatever. They gonna clap for, you know, here's the thing. I, we, 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 we sought every resource possible to make sure that our child could be the best version of themselves. So we went to the cast of a TV show and we said, hey, <laughs> demonic Hollywood, uh, how should we go about this? Should we, you know, what, what, what's the best doctor, you know, that can chop this thing off? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, 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 what should we do? Y'all seek godly counsel. These are not decisions that should, be, that should be made lightly. These are literally life-changing, altering decisions that you are going to have to live with as a parent and that your son is going to have to live with for the rest of his life. Seek godly counsel. Seek godly counsel. I know I keep pausing it, but I have to because it's, it's, it's a reaction video. I have to pause the video or else they're going to copyright me. But seek godly counsel. For everybody, seek godly counsel. Stop seeking your friends. Stop seeking people who don't know any more than you do. Go to the source above for the counsel that you need, especially when it comes to this type of stuff. Especially. It's one thing to, to have this at home, but n knowing that she's going to be out in the world because yep. you're a public figure, and even if you weren't, she's going to school, and to want to be protective and to make sure she's safe, yes. um, that must be a scary thing because it's one thing for you to love her and, ex and, and your wife to love her, but that must 
you just want everyone to love her the same way. Exactly. And once Zion, once Zion came home and said, hey, I'll, you call me Zion, I'm ready to take on this, um, I looked at it and said, you are a leader. You are a leader, and this is our opportunity to allow you to be a voice. Right now, it's through us, because she's 12 years old, but eventually, it would be through her. Right. Well, and Glisten is an organization you're working with, and there's a lot of, if anybody else there out there can relate to this and, and needs help, you can go to our website and we can direct you, because I'm sure there are a lot of people that just don't know what to do. Yeah. So you're a great example. Thank you. Um, Hold on. The, I know I got, that- I got something for you. If y'all are in this situation and y'all need help, I got a book for you. It's been around for, for thousands and thousands of years. Actually, the first book in, ever in creation. Actually, this book is, is, is truer than true. All truth derives from this book. It's called the Bible. If you need some counsel, it's called the Bible. It's right in front of you. You can get it on Amazon, same day. That's where you should go. That's, that's where you should go. And you're, no, 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 your son is not a leader. Your son is not a leader. Now, here's the thing. I would hope if, for, if I was ever in that situation and my child came to me and said, hey, one of my daughters came to me and said, hey, you know, I, I, I ain't really feeling this girl thing no more. I'm trying to be a boy. You know what I'm saying? What's up? I would hope, number one, that they would come to me with that information and not suppress it. Because, hey, I, I can respect that you came to me with that information. Now, as a parent, how do I properly route this information? How am I being a good steward of my home, of my children, of my legacy? You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, everybody is still grieving uh, over the loss of Kobe yeah. and all the people that we lost. On, um, you must have a lot of memories of, of Kobe. All right. So I guess they're, they're talking about something different now. But... Um, let me show you the response to what D Wade said to his, uh, ex suing him. This is from the Wayne Wade's Instagram. He said, since this must be the new way of parenting, I guess I have to address these allegations here, which is a damn shame. While I'm on a life changing trip in our motherland, Africa, I've received a social media post about me forcing our 15 year old child to be someone she's not and to do something against her will. These are serious and harmful allegations that have hurt our children. While none of us are surprised by Siobhan's attempt to fight Zaya's identity and her unwavering attempt to drag my name through the mud, I'm very disappointed that she continuously finds ways of centering herself in her needs without regard for her children. I don't think she's centering herself in her needs, though. She's actually saying, hey, I'm the only one with some sense in this family, clearly. I just want her, him, Zion. I want Zion to make the decision when he's 18. That's really what the petition says that she filed to sue him. It's to say, hey, I think you're pushing him to do this for monetary gain, let's wait until he's 18 to make this decision. How is that making that about her and her needs? She's being a parent. Our, did, did we forget our responsibility as parent is to have our children's best interests, not the interests of the world? Did we forget that? <sighs> this report came out while Zaya was in class, this kid has maintained a 4.0 GPA in honors class while navigating all of this unsolicited and harmful attention and debate about her gender and sexuality from those who are committed to not listening to her, much less even knowing her. Siobhan tried a similar attempt over a decade ago with equally damaging lies and causing irre irre irreparable harm to our children and 13 lawyers later I was awarded sole custody of our two children as an active NBA player. All I ever wanted was to have my parenting time uninterrupted, as I knew that it was very harmful and difficult time for our kids to navigate their new normal. So instead of trying to actually co-parent over the years, she's left her home to see more lawyers and has taken the time to talk to more lawyers since I filed for divorce, then, she, then she's left her home to actually see or have truly spoken and listened to Zaya over all of these years. 
I've given her the opportunity to reach out to Zaya's teachers, doctors, and therapists over the years, and even meet her friends. So she could get her own understanding of our, of our child's needs for her life. She won't do it. She has not been at school, recital, graduation, school dance, play date, practice, parent-teacher conference, etc. And Zaya has given every has given her every opportunity to try to get to know her. She won't do it. Did you ever maybe think that this world that you have created for your now daughter is a world that is largely, if not completely, approving of the lifestyle that your child has chosen and that there is nobody in that circle that can actually speak common sense or speak truth into your child. Have you ever thought to think that maybe this is a very closed off community, a very closed off circle that you've created and therefore your ex-wife can already see right through it. She can already see that no matter what she says or tries to do, it's going to fall flat because your now daughter has so many people in her ear. I, 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 feel, I feel weird saying that, but uh, there's so many people in this child's ear that no matter what your ex-wife probably says, it's not going to sway the opinion because now you have medical professionals, therapists, doctors saying that it's okay, saying that it's natural. You have the whole school on board with it, saying that it's okay, saying that it's natural. So yeah, maybe the only way that she feels that she can get heard is to take legal action. And she's already shut out. She's, she doesn't have custody of, of the children as it is. So, I mean, it, it's not uncommon that she would take legal action. Then he goes on to say, as a woman who claims to be a good Christian mother, <laughs> I've yet to see her make any sacrifice or effort to leave her own home to participate in her children's lives over and over a decade. Zaya is not the same three-year-old child anymore, and she's screaming that to the world, but most importantly to her mother. No one in our house would ever force Zaya or any of our children to do anything against their will, much less force an identity on them. So now it's forcing an identity on a child who was born as a boy. That that's forcing your identity is 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 saying that hey you're you're born as a boy you're a boy that's now that is forcing an identity. This isn't this isn't a game for my family and definitely not for Zaya. This is her life. All the while, my wife and our village have has been rocked, has been her rock in helping her pick up the pieces after heartbreak after heartbreak. Siovan has decided to pretty much be an absent parent to Zaya all on her own. As men, we get a bad rep for not showing up and being absentee fathers. Well, that's not the case here because I'm 10 toes down and I'm still going through the BS. I will not sit on my hands this time and allow her to make a mockery of my dedication to my family. The high road has run out of real estate. My lawyer will, will be in contact and best of luck to the 14th lawyer as they try to unravel a book of lies that's been sold to them. Um, I need to get into some scripture because this is kind of stressing me out. Isaiah 5. My goodness, bro. My goodness. Isaiah 5 verse 20. What sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil, that dark is light and light is dark, that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. What sorrow for those who are wise in their own eyes and think themselves so clever. What sorrow for those who say that good is evil and evil is good. I think now we live in a society that awards a parent for allowing their child to be who they want to be, allowing their child to make adult decisions. As parents, we're now awarded for that. And here's the thing. I don't know the whole story. Even if she's absent, um, even if she's not showing up to certain things, I'm sure there's a story. There's two sides to every story. But the fact of the matter is, I don't think she's wrong in wanting her child to wait until he's 18 to make this kind of decision. I don't think that she's wrong in wanting 
her child to fully develop his brain our brains are what 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 is it our brains don't stop growing until we're like 25 or something like that like as a teenager who can't even drive we're making forever life altering decisions and it seems like the majority of this world is on board with that and the majority of this world wants children to be able to make decisions at a younger and younger age, adult decisions at a younger and younger age, right? What sorrow for those who are wise in their own eyes and think themselves so clever. Like I said, um, I'm praying for Dwayne Wade. I'm praying that he has a, a true encounter with God. I'm praying that um, I'm praying that he's not wise in his own eyes as he has proven to be thus far. And I'm praying that he allows the true living God to give him counsel and to speak wisdom into his life. Because like I said, this is a decision that you can never overturn. You know, you, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen when your child um, is six foot five, black woman in America at 32 years old and is now regretting that um she can't have a family of her own, that she can't have children of her own because those reproductive parts were, 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 were ripped out of her before the age of 18. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's a truly sad story. Um, but you know what's crazy? My belief system, and if you're watching this, I'm assuming that we share a, a common belief system, it's becoming less and less common. It's becoming less common for people to stand on traditional parenting beliefs. Um, and it's becoming more common to just allow children to act like adults. Um, but what do y'all think? Let me know what y'all think. Get in my comments. Like this video. I'm out.